Hey, Thaddeus. How you doing, Mary? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Mary Juliana Shores. And your story is a little on the fascinating side. You have quite a history. Oh, thank you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, let's start. Let's start with the book. You have a brand new book. It just came out. I saw on Facebook your book is in stores now, uh, called Conscious Communications. How's it feel to have a book come out? Oh my gosh! So I know. Well, first of all, we tried to do this Facebook Live a few weeks ago. I think maybe even a month ago, and we couldn't get the tech to work right. And so today is kind of like the redo of the original episode that we were going to do. And it's Absolutely. so much better today because the book actually launched on Tuesday. Well, here's the thing. They made it, you know, everybody has made it quite clear to me that you can't expect your book to be in bookshelves. And so what happened was um, our mutual friend, Megan, her boyfriend was at Barnes & Noble on Sunday afternoon. And um, yeah, so what, what happened was they just found the book. And they snapped a picture of it. And when they did, they um, sent it in and it was, they sent the picture to me. And I said, my response to that was, did you put that book there? And Megan texts me back and she goes, no, uh, this is real life. <laughs> so it was, it was just a hilarious moment. I dropped everything. I went into the store and um, talk about life changing. So now I checked the Barnes and Noble stores all over the country and they're literally in all the stores. So it's, yeah, I mean, all over the country. And so people have been sending me pictures. I just got a picture this morning from the store in Brooklyn and from a buddy of mine who went in there just actually to take a picture of it and to buy the book. Wow. And um, I'm getting messages from people who have already read the book um, that they're really telling me the impact that this book is having on them. So that is the feeling, you know, that, that feeling when you've made a change in someone's circumstances, you, you just can't, um, I, I, that's the juice right there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, as I was reading through the book, I saw you've changed the circumstances in a lot of lives and your first business. So, so the business you built is, was in the collections agency, which a lot of people don't necessarily associate with positive change. <laughs> But you took that business and it, I was very fascinated when I met uh, your assistant and she was describing, um, and folks, I have to flash back, I met Mary's assistant at a presentation out in Illinois um, and I was super impressed with this girl and we were talking and she told me about Mary's book uh, and the business and how you were able to take uh, the collections agency and then the, you turned it, the whole model on its head to uh, make it a positive experience for people who actually owe money. It's so true. So let's uh, give a shout out to Megan Mosslander, because I'm sure yes. that's who you met. And she is my business development coordinator. So she has just been doing a phenomenal job um, doing her thing, really getting the words out. So what was different about our company is that we really just wanted to make an impact in an industry that is very negative and punitive. And it's been my personal belief for a very long time that if someone has a debt, the, the very fact that they have a debt, you know, whether it's a big debt or a small debt, owing money creates this, it's a psychological burden. And sure. the burden is that it will create a wall, like a brick wall in between them and living the life of their dreams. It's literally like a wall. And the reason it's like a wall is because what's happening in the subconscious mind is that there's a feeling of shame and a feeling of unworthiness. And I learned through many years of research that I could really change that feeling around if I made my goal. So my goal is not to collect the money, but it's to make people feel good about paying their debt. And so anyone yeah. who knows, anyone that... Um, works in this industry and knows me. And actually I noticed that Scott Miller was viewing, I don't know if he still is, but shout out to Scott Miller because he's someone who's also in the industry that works with me um, as one of our partnering collection firms who also has a similar philosophy about how you treat people. So it's just very important to understand that I can make people feel good about paying their debt instead of feeling shame and unworthiness about having a debt. Fascinating. I remember even reading Sam Walton's autobiography and he talked about 
when he started the first Walmart and then he went to a rapid growth phase because he, he came up on a model that was uh, very profitable at scale. So he had to scale, which means he had to get a lot of loans. And he talked about, he got to a point before they went public, then he, he said for like five years, they were just maxed out on debt all the time. And even though you're growing and there's a lot of success, that debt still, he talked about how much it weighed on his mind and it created sleepless nights, even though he was in a situation where he was still paying his debts and the business was growing, it was still crushing. Yeah, I read an article recently that this like hidden shame that entrepreneur, entrepreneurs have in general that we're sort of as an entrepreneur expected to be like always on the top of our game and that there's this hidden element of, you know, if you're going through stressful times, as entrepreneurs, we don't talk about that. We always talk about, you know, the times when it's great and everything is going exactly according to plan. And we, we bury a lot of that stress. I think that's probably true. We say that a lot, and ev because everybody in real life, there's ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And an entrepreneur is sometimes expected to, they have to lead a team, they have to be in the media, uh, you know, uh, helping the public understand the product or, or the service they offer. And all that has to be positive projection leadership. And there are also tough times behind the scenes that you aren't always shared. Right. So what were some of the, I mean, you, I mean, writing a book, not easy and doing it while you're managing a business at the same time. What were some of the tough times you went through in the creation of conscious communications? You know, I tell a really, I tell a story in, um, I, it's either chapter six or chapter seven of the book where I was really going through some tough times because I had a lot of, I had a lot of stressful things happening all at the same time. So it wasn't that just one thing was happening. It was that several things were happening. I got a very large unexpected um, amount of money that I had owed. And when I say large, I mean like equivalent to um, one year salary. That's pretty big. I also had a key employee leave the company. And this wasn't like a home loan. It wasn't like on your, this was like business no. loan. <laughs> this yeah. was, no, this was definitely like, pay now or you're in trouble type of thing. So sure. it, was, it was completely unexpected. And um, then I also had an employee who had been with me for several years, leave the company. I was, um, anyway, I, I won't say the whole list, but there were a lot of things. And I actually use this as a way to, to um, practice my own processes that are in the book, which in this chapter, I give like a five-step process. I actually call it five steps to break through your breakdown where, and I explain the neurology of why it works and how you can go through these very specific exercises to create um, the dopamine and the serotonin in your brain that you're going to need to have in order to start to feel better immediately and also sure. to eliminate procrastination. Because what happens is when we get stressed and we get overwhelmed, we start to procrastinate. So all of a sudden, you know, little kitten videos or little baby videos on the internet start to like, fascinate us, right? We've right. all done. And, um, but we watch the video because it gives us an instant kick of dopamine and serotonin, right? But then what happens is five hours later, when you didn't get anything done because you were on YouTube all day, you start to, um, you start to have this increase of, um, epinephrine and adrenaline and cortisol because you're, you're being really hard on yourself. And it's just this, this never ending cycle. And so that's just one of the sure. things that are in the book. Hey, I want to give, so I just saw Jeb Cook joined. So uh, hey, Jeb. I want to say hey, hi to Deb. Deb um, and I worked together for many, many years. So she is an expert on all of these things and she has read the book as well. Awesome. So one of the things I loved, so in this book is that you, you didn't just sit down and think, hey, I, I might have a cool idea. Let me write a book. You actually have spent years applying this to your business. And in the book, at one point, you mentioned how you came home from a seminar and, and it led to a lot of changes and gave you some of the ideas to turn your business into a positive environment. And I, I know other entrepreneurs out there have probably gone through this where you have a great idea, you come home and then you tell the team, hey, we're going to do this new thing. And everybody like, that's new. We don't know how to do it. And the vision kind of falls apart. And so then you have to figure out how do we train the team? How do we get all the team moving? And once you got that happening, uh, one of the things I loved about this, you've actually used some of these processes on the, on the words you choose to use and words you choose not to use 
and you created a 33% growth in the year you implemented this, right? For your That's business. Right. That's and right. So, so it was, um, I went to, it was 2005. I went to the Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within event. So, um, I mean, I just feel like, I, I mean, I love Tony Robbins and I talk about him in the book somewhat because that was really my entry point to personal development. So prior sure. to that, Prior to that, I, I, I didn't even know. Like, I had no idea the information that could take you to the next level even existed. And, sure. when I, you know, it's very overwhelming. When you go to a 50-hour seminar that lasts for, like, two and a half days, it's a lot of information. And really yeah. what happened for me was I took two powerful, life-changing understandings away from it, which was what you focus on grows and yeah. always know your outcome. And, okay. um I took those things, I went back to my office, and first of all, I kind of wanted to be Tony Robbins, so I took my little workbook and I started teaching my staff everything that I had learned at this workshop. And, you know, I wanted to apply this to the collections business in general, like just to our office. I wanted to right. use this to change some things. So I literally looked at the phone and I said, I want the next person who calls to be happier at the end of the call than they were at the beginning of the call. And that was the starting point of everything in our business changing. So very quickly after that, because what happens is our brains are like this idea muscle. And when you pose a resourceful question, it has to be a resourceful question. It can't just be any question. Okay. But when you pose a resourceful question to your mind, then, yeah. or, you know, the information is already there. And I was just talking to someone on a, on a podcast yesterday. I was on this show, Best Life Cafe, and she had gone through, and I know, did you do the exercises in um, Dream with a Deadline? Yes. So the last one in there is to create an action plan. And um, the thing about creating these action plans is that it really helps your brain come up with information. It takes it out of the subconscious mind where, you know, you really are very brilliant back there. And it yeah. brings it to the forefront of your conscious mind so that you can become aware of all these great ideas. So all of a sudden, when you do that exercise, all of these wonderful ideas start coming to you. Well, that's what happened to me. So when I asked myself this resourceful question, how can I make this person happier at the end yes. of the call, then I just naturally started coming up with the right words to say. And from there, I started studying neuroscience. I started understanding like what words were triggering people into their fight or flight. And let's face sure. it, just calling into customer service puts you in fight or flight without even, without even trying. You're, yep. you're just already in it. Yeah. So what, it, so you, you said, you'll say, so it's great to ask questions of your subconscious, but it has to be a resourceful question. And right. how do we tell the difference? What, what makes a question a good resourceful question? So my example would be what I think people do is they say this, I can't do that. That's impossible. There's no way. And yeah. if you switch that around to saying, um, I feel worse already. Well, I mean, the best question is how can I? Okay. Just say, yeah. You know, whatever it is you want to do, I want to write a book. How can I write a book? Mm -hmm. And then just, just, over the next few days, see. Another thing is um, I love, I'm a big fan of James Altucher, and he has this thing called 10 Ideas a Day. And when I cool. discovered this, I kind of became a little crazed over it. And I had my staff, the beginning of every day, you had to write 10 ideas. And it didn't matter what the ideas were. It could be like 10 ideas of things I want to change about Facebook, 10 sure. places I want to visit, 10 stocks I want to invest in, 10 books I want to read you know, 10 restaurants I want to try. But what happens is it primes the muscle of your, uh, primes the muscle of your brain to continue to generate ideas. And so when you do that, if you do it as a daily practice, then you'll be in the shower like two weeks from now and some crazy, wonderful idea will hit you. Right. It's all because you're sort of oiling and you're, you're like a muscle, you know, you're, you're just priming that muscle in your brain to continue to come up with good ideas. And so- That's for us, you know, like I really wanted to make this book happen. And so I went to the Hay House Writers Workshop and um, I'm actually speaking at one in October in Orlando. So anybody who wants to learn how to publish a book with Hay House, ask me in the comments and we will, in fact, you Thaddeus, I don't know if you've got a book inside of you. 
but I would love to talk to you about publishing and coming to coming to Orlando to get your shot at winning a book contract. Absolutely. I love book contracts. <laughs> Me and too. Um, so in the book, you talk about specific words that it's you started making it very simple to help other team members under were just a list of words to avoid. Mm -hmm. And what were some of the words that you found were best to leave out of our vocabulary? So the words that we have a do not say list and mm -hmm. the word, the basic words on the do not say list are no, not, can't, won't, however, and unfortunately. Okay. And you know, a lot of people, so a lot of people don't believe me when I tell them that however and unfortunately are negative words. And in some situations, they actually may be sympathetic. But in a yeah. business situation, whenever you hear the word unfortunately, and people tend to sing that, like unfortunately, yep. like you know nothing good is about to happen. And the thing sure. is, your body starts to create the fight or flight chemicals. And when that happens, you're braced. You're like ready for the fight. And yeah. so if you say this to your clients or your customers, then what's happening is they're ready to fight you. And you're, the thing is like the rational part of your mind and the irrational part of your mind cannot work at the same time because right, sure. the juice is only going in one direction or the other. And so when you say words that activate the parasympathetic nervous system, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I can tell you, so like, tell me, Tell me something that your grandmother used to make during your holiday meals when you were a kid. Oh, good question. During holiday meals. Like your favorite food that grandma made. My grandma used to make, this is the funniest thing. I still remember her hamburgers. She made them in the skillet. We never make, we always grill ours. Made them in the skillet. They were delicious. <laughs> still haven't figured it out. Okay. So here's the thing that you your grandmother makes the best hamburgers like in the world right sure okay so when you think about your grandmother's hamburgers what's happening in your mind is your body and your nervous system and your brain remembers everything that's ever happened to you since birth okay and when you think about those hamburgers that is activating the parasympathetic nervous system by um reactivating all the ways that you felt during the meal. It's not about the food. Yeah. And to be honest with you, that doesn't even sound good. <laughs> like a burger and a skillet that, okay. But you see, Oh, my trust point. me. They were good. <laughs> I'm sure they were. But, um, have you ever, have you ever heard someone else say, Oh, come to my grandma's house. She has the best macaroni and cheese in the world. And you get there and it's like, ew. <laughs> sure. But, that person remembers it as the best because it's not about the taste of the food. It's about the nostalgia created in all of the magical moments that you spent while you were having those hamburgers. Absolutely. I mean, it's it, fascinating. That's actually, so I was in the music business for 10 years and that's the model is you, someone comes to your show, you create an amazing experience and then they go by the record because every time they hear the song now, it triggers all the feelings from that show. Mm -hmm. which makes the song bigger than life. And that's oh, the magic. Uh, What's that? You get it. I mean, you totally yeah. get it. So like in my industry, how can I create the feeling of somebody feeling good about paying their debt? And that was my question to myself. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, I know that there are words that will trigger that fight or flight. And but you're doing something really interesting though, because you're taking an experience that they probably have. So my grandma's hamburgers, or my best friend's mom, the way she made catfish, or, you know, my favorite rock concert. Like, I have these wonderful associations that come to it. Mm -hmm. Your clients, you're most likely are bringing a lot of maybe not so wonderful associations, uh, maybe a lot of negative associations even, and you were able to, uh, so it's one thing to draw on and say, oh, they loved, I'm going to give them what they love. But you were actually able to take something they didn't love and change the way they felt about it. That, yeah, because I don't have a magical music experience to give them. Right. Right. So, okay. So the way that the way that we do that is taking an, a situation where, first of all, when they come into us, they are expecting a fight. So we have to we I call it the scale. So like they're already 
way low on the frequency scale and we have to bring them up. So we need to take a moment to validate them. Because when you validate what someone is going through, you're actually creating rapport and you're making them feel connected to you as another human being. So we can create a different experience by following these simple steps of like, we're going to take a moment to say to them, you know what, I completely understand your situation. And if yeah. I were in that situation, I would feel the exact same way you do. You know, we're not telling them, hey, you're a bad person because you owe this hospital a hundred bucks. We're saying, you know what? We understand that you're in this situation and we have great news for you. So like we want to plant, we want to, I call it planting seeds of happiness. So yeah. we want to use words that are going to plant seeds of happiness in the customer's mind because planting seeds of happiness actually reinforces a positive outcome. If okay. I... If I, as like, say I work for the cable company and you call me because your cable isn't working and right. I say, I'm sorry, T-Rex, but you know, it's your equipment on your side. Cause that's what they always say. Sure. That's what they say to me every time I call or, you know, I'm sorry, we don't have your reservation or whatever it is. Then yeah. what's happening is you're dropping down in your emotions in that, in that frequency scale. And we want to raise you up and say, you know what? Um, I understand how frustrating this is. And I've got great news because if you say, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that. It's against our policy. What you're doing is you're reinforcing a negative outcome. Yep. You, the words on the do not say list reinforces a negative outcome with the customer. Using words on the, on the do say list uh, reinforces a positive outcome. And so it's really interesting to talk to you about like this particular subject matter, because my second book that I'm writing right now with the working title of the communication code, it's all about this stuff. So the first book's really about personal development. The second book is going to be, um, the working titles communication code. So we'll see. Cool. And so you were able to use this to generate a 33% growth in one year. Was it just eliminating the negative words or did you have to instill um, some proactive, uh, like prescriptions as well. Well, we have a, so we have three rules. Okay. And we have three steps. And this is so, what the whole book's about, right? So we get the book and you can read how to do it. Well, the book is about personal development. Okay. So you've got, we've got two different things going on. So we have, um, my, my workshops, my training that I've been teaching for 10 years are <laughs> about what's called words that work which is a customer service. It's a complete system that I developed 10 years ago. And I've been cool. teaching healthcare and IT. I've been teaching it, um, yeah, all over the place for many, many years. So that's okay. a really simple three rules and three steps. Awesome. And, um, and so for the personal development, so there are words we can avoid using. What are the, some of the things that we can proactively choose to do? Well, the, the book has a coaching exercise at the end of every chapter, and we actually just created a companion course to go along with the book, and we just sent you that as well because we want people to be able to continue to read the book while they're doing the exercises. So, um, for example, one of the great things to talk about is cleanse or clog. So it looks like this in the book. There's actually a chart. I love that concept. Okay, so the concept of... Cleanse or clog. So let me let me start it off by talking like this. So we all have infinite an infinite potential that could happen to us. Like, would you agree that like in each person's lives they have a potential they could live live up to? Sure. Like, all, your your potential is different than my potential, but you have a highest potential and I have a highest potential. Mm -hmm. But we also each have like a lowest potential. So for example, I have the potential to become a best-selling author, but I also have the potential of never selling one book, yep. right? Okay, so it's the thing like this. How do you take something from a possibility to a probability? Okay. Okay, so we all have like infinite possibilities, but in order to move that from a possibility to a probability, it really boils down to the choices that you make because the choices you make in every thin sliced moment of your life are going to determine the next thing that happens and the next thing that happens. And in the book, I tell the story about meeting Chaz Palminteri from the movie A Bronx Tale. And like the big message I got from that book is the quote, the choices you make will shape your life forever. Wow. Well, I think that it can be really complicated. Like our lives 
feel complicated and the feeling of complexity creates chaos. And we really need to make this simple. Like, okay, Mary, I get it that we want to make our choice. We want to make our lives more probable instead of possible. So how mm -hmm. do you, so I just call this cleanser clog and um, it really goes to like this, everything you say or do, every action you take, every word you speak is either cleansing you or clogging you. So like say okay. for example, your relationship with your wife or with your children, everything you say in that relationship, everything you do, every word you speak, every look on your face, it's either cleansing or clogging your relationship. That is true with your relationship with your wife, your relationship with your friends, with your colleagues, with people on Facebook, with your clients, with your doctors, with everybody. And what I'm really talking about is that everything is either creating a connection or driving a disconnection. Yep. And so if you just ask yourself, will this choice cleanse me or clog me? then you can understand that the things that are you're doing are either moving you closer to living the life you want or moving you further away from it. Absolutely. Wow. All right. I've gotten to check out the book, guys. I've read the first couple chapters. I can't wait to finish it. I hope you get to pick up a copy. I put a link in the comments below so you can check out the landing page, Mary's landing page. And if there's anything else, we'll, we'll add some more content down there later. If you have questions for Mary, you can put them in the comments below. And hey, <laughs> any Sorry. last words, Mary? We, by, the, by the people logging in. <laughs> absolutely. Any uh, last words before we take off? Well, I just want to, I just want to thank everyone for showing up today. I want to thank you, Thaddeus, for having me here. I hope we do this again. Uh, sure maybe we it's a little bit of traction. And honestly, if anybody wants to go to that writer's workshop in Orlando, just put it in the comments. We'll send you a link. And I'm even willing to arrange a phone call to tell you about my experience with it because everybody can write a book if that's what you feel called to do. Books are cool. Books, Books are, are cool. Yay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. It's been a joy. And I love um, the depth of research you did to understand not only uh, at surface level what we might do, but to understand the scientific terms and the chemistry behind it, very fascinating. Thanks for taking the time to research it all and kind of packaging it up so we can digest it. I love it. I love neuroscience. <laughs> it, is, it is what we're made of, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mary. Mary Juliana right. Shores, Influence for Insights. We'll see you next time. Adios. Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications, at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.